Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name's Carl. Welcome to the Print Business Clinic brought to you by us here at The Vinyl Guys. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm Carl from the UK. I'm a tech over here, um, fixing everything, rolling, servicing, repairing, um, giving out tech advice where I can. Um, if you don't know about The Vinyl Guys, we are essentially a sign and print business with a little bit of a difference. So as well as doing all the everyday signage, stickers, um, van graphics, we also run um, custom workshops for users. So sort of that go between, between obviously rolling and selling the machines, the dealers installing them. And most users need that little bit in between how to make money from your machine, how to make stickers, how to do van graphics. And we we are that we are that company in the UK. Um, so we offer that service to users. We also run Roland training courses. So when Roland sell a machine, um, Alex is an accredited Roland trainer. So here in the UK, uh, when Roland sell a machine, they give you a free intermediate print course. So once the machine's installed, you get a few weeks to have a mess around, get printing, get up and running. And then you have questions. You may have questions about things in VersaWorks, things on the printer, things in the manual clean, um, which is where we come in. They come to us. We run the training courses on behalf of Roland. So that's part of what we do over here, if you're not familiar with the vinyl guys. Um, enough about us. Uh, moving on to today's episode, as you all know, we have a special guest. Um, we are always aiming on these three sessions not only to give as much information as you can, but to give, make sure the quality of the information, make sure it's worthwhile that you, you are watching, you are learning from your printer. Um, we had Phil Keenan on a few weeks ago, who is a Roland colour expert. Um, and now to discuss all things service and maintenance, I'm very pleased to welcome um, Ernie Viveros. Um, I apologise if I've Pronounced. You've got it perfect, my man. It's, it's perfect. Thank you. It, it, it's, it's quite hard in my yeah. accent, so I'm glad I got yeah. that right. So, um, yeah, so very, uh, thanks for joining us. We obviously well, My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, and, highly, uh, rec highly recommended, and we uh, yeah. see your name pop up a lot on, on, the, on the Facebook yeah. groups. Oh, for, for sure. Um, a little bit, of, you, you want to know about myself and how I kind of got here, I, I guess. Yes, um, So, uh, I, I've been with uh, rolling as a tech uh, since about 2006. Um, I started like everybody else uh, in commercial printing. Uh, a lot of the techs uh, are past commercial printing guys, pre-press guys, eventually got into a wide format. I did. Uh, this was my second career. Um, I was in uh, commercial printing until I was about 38, 39 years old. Uh, found this very fancy device called the Roland Versacam SP540V. Uh, in 2004, opened up my wallet and said, please take as much money as you'd like. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right, as many did, and uh, immediately had problems. Uh, and, and, and that's not a secret, you know, it was a great machine, but there was a lot of problems. There was not a whole lot of service. Uh, so, uh, and I had just started a sign business, not knowing anything about signs, knowing a lot about, about printing, uh, knowing a lot about equipment in the printing business. So that is how I got into service because there was nobody who was servicing. Uh, so because it was like one guy for like a giant region, probably the size of, of the UK, even over, over here at the time, um, people who were, had given out $20,000 for uh, an SP 540V had no service. So there was a lot of four letter words being said between dealers and users and, and to be included and maybe a couple of death threats, but, I said to the to the dealer at the time, just explain to me how to how to fix that. I said I'm good with technology. I've been doing with, working with laser guided filmmaking systems for much longer than uh, the months that they thought I was involved. So they explained it, and and I started self servicing at that at that point. Um, how I became a tech out of becoming a uh, being self servicer was that I had started my business in 2000, like, you know, say four, five, six, bad economy. Uh, I was a bad uh, businessman at the time and I did need to close my business. So I went to go work for my local science supplier who wanted to 
sell Roland essentially. So I helped them become a Roland dealer. And that was a, a, a dealer in Rhode Island uh, here. So uh, I basically went to all the courses and all the courses, Roland was in Rhode Island, their East Coast facility. So I went to every course. I went to the office whenever I could uh, over there and became really the guy for a service in Southern New England. Then it came into all of New England. Um, and, I, and I worked that for, for a long time, uh, but I always wanted to be on my own. And I guess you could say I was, uh, it's terrible for me to say I was so good I put myself out of a job because uh, the maintenance was so good on the machines, nothing broke. I did two warranty services in seven years, right? So that's kind of crazy, right? So yeah. there was certainly a lot of a lot of maintenance work, but the maintenance work wasn't able to uh, to provide me a salary at the dealer, and so I they turned me into a salesperson, and that was not my thing. So uh so at that point i decided it was best just to go out on my own and i supported their their service needs but as an independent but but independent i was still while, while i had the certifications i was an independent guy and everybody got service and that was all good but i did never really ended up getting that support out of roland for for many years you know as, as an independent uh certainly you know people inside and you get the the, the data you need but i was just really went through the dealer. The dealer had to buy the parts. The dealer had to, to do all of the, the paperwork for warranty services and that, that sort of thing. So uh, I ended up going back like you guys. I, I was I had a business that was similar to your business where I was a vinyl printer. I had you know, I was I was loaded with rolling machines. I worked for other sign guys. And that was and when people needed service for their Rollins, they would call me. And so it was kind of a combination of things. And if, even if their printer was down, I would print for them. And, um, and that was a good business for, for a long time uh, until uh, other dealers in, in the New England, because you know, from Boston, you probably hear an accent. The, um, I was, felt like I was eating off their plate. So um, it was decided that it was best for me to, to uh, and I say it's decided, that means there was an argument. Uh, for me to move away from being an independent self-servicer, you know, for the dealers. So they had to have a full-time guy. That was the contract. You know, it is, they have to have a full-time guy. These guys didn't have it. So, and that's fine. And I went kind of like on my own, uh, to be truthful. I was very angry at Roland for that. Um, uh, there's this, um, famous day where I sold all my Roland equipment and, um, and I sold, uh, <laughs> uh I sold four Versa cams and, in, in four hours, it was a fire sale, uh, and, and re replaced it with a, an HP L360, a 560, a Mamati JV300, and an S80 uh, from Epson. So it was a, a, a knee-jerk reaction that was wrong, um, but it, it helped me understand the value of Roland for me uh, and for users by having to fight with these uh, other pieces of gear. And... Um, and that's fine. I, and, and that's what I did. I, I ran the, the shop. I was still, funny enough, getting phone calls from people who still needed service, even though I was not able to get parts. I was not able to get anything. So I would have to troubleshoot over the phone and over Zoom or wherever and say, hey, order these parts from the dealer and then I will show up and install <laughs> them for you. Uh, so, so that was my business uh, for years. Uh, essentially, probably seven years uh, I operated like that. Um, uh, it, and because of I didn't know any of the new things, I be suddenly became a legacy guy because that was it. It was everything from below Truviz, uh, the TR, uh, the uh, VG and SG. That was, that was my world uh, that, I, that I left. So um, uh, that was good. Uh, about a year ago, Roland came uh, to me, a Roland DGA, Ron Ball. Uh, and asked if I would um, work with them again to be their legacy guy. And uh, which means that um, push off anybody who's calling them uh, on an old machine, Ernie will take care of you, um, which I did. And, and it was fine. And that, that's been good. And then finally, we kind of firmed it up this past year. Uh, and I became a, a service center um, for them uh, here in the Southeast, which I am kind of building right now. 
so I've gotten all the certifications to for the new stuff. Uh, I'm working with a couple of techs right now to try and offload that work for me, and um, because it's a lot of work for one guy. And um, and I so I do a lot of travel, uh, even though I'm for the south. I travel from, I mean, I'm in southwestern Florida. I'm about as far as you go down to the Everglades, and uh, but I cover all the way up to Canada. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of flying around, a lot of driving, um, and um, it's getting a little tiring, to be truthful. Uh, but uh, and I'm also 57 years old, so <laughs> you know uh, what that means. I'm still I can still go, but I can't see small screws anymore. Um, it, it's it's really really hard. So, uh, but I like what's going on. Uh, I'm happy to help people. I, I do spend a lot of time with the old gear versus the new gear getting more of the new newer uh, i call it newer but it's really vg and sg and vg2 and sg2 um older um uh uv machines that sort of thing so uh getting a lot more stuff going on uh, essentially so you've had a bit of a, a bit of a rolling journey then over the years by the sounds of yeah it. yeah ab absolutely you, you know and, and honestly i i really enjoy the machines i, I think uh, after having extensive experience, I'll, I'll call it user experience, not tech tech experience with the HP and uh, Mamaki. And I did repair myself. I would never touch one professionally uh, because that's not your th my thing. Um, people ask me all the time and I, and I turn them down. But I could see the, the value of the simplicity, as you would call it, of the Roland platform compared to like an HP compared to uh, an Epson or, or even Mamaki, which is very Japanese. Um, the, the Rolands can be self-repaired to a certain degree, even by a novice, if, especially if you are used to uh, working on a vehicle. Um, there's, there's a lot of similarities. You know, I usually get guys who are forklift mechanics or uh, hydraulic uh, guys or whatever, and you can just explain the systems and then they will they will understand it, um, but also like everything when that's that has electromechanical, it's not knowing what to do, it's knowing what not to do, and that's where you get into trouble. Um, so, so the the whole self repair thing, which I'm a big advocate, I'm a right to repair guy. Um, you know, I I was uh, I caused a lot of trouble. Uh, here in the U.S. with, uh, with uh, right to repair uh, and Roland specifically. This is the only uh, stuff I've heard about with this with the yeah. service mode and stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, and and and, and so you know, and that's coming back into you know, it'll be it's it's going to be right to repair uh, soon here in the, in the United States. Um, but I'll, as I say to to everyone, just because you can repair it doesn't mean you should repair it. Uh, I have a, a Volkswagen Turbo Diesel. I sure i could get my hand in there and do some damage you know i choose not to i choose to, to have an expert do that and and pay the money um even to change brakes or whatever you know I, i'd rather have somebody who works on it every day uh when it's important uh and even when i owned a, an hp latex and and epson and mamaki i paid for people to repair my gear and uh, now i did stand behind them and made them very nervous but um but they did it every day you know, and, and you, and you learn. And, uh, uh, so we've seen a lot of people who have been in remote areas, uh, be able to, to, re uh, repair their own machines. That's great. But I've also seen those same people very often damage their machines. Um, so it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. It's, it's, it's this double-edged sword, you know, well, we're, um, we're, we're sort of in, in the same boat. Um, sure. I used to obviously work for Roland being the, I, I live in the center of England. So I used to be the, the Midlands engineer for Roland, but now we don't have access to any parts because we're not, we're not an authorized uh, repair center. So I spend a lot of time on the phone with customers. And like you say, it's, it's not showing them how to repair it. It's, it's sort of advised if they want to repair it themselves, it's, right. telling them what, it's telling them what not to do and be careful right. of this, be careful of that. Um, but most of the time it is, you know, cap top changes, wiper changes, right. um, damper changes. I, I try and try and stay away from getting the customers to do that themselves. They've got to be really confident in that. And I always give out sort of like a warning. Say, if you're going to do it, be careful. Make sure you don't damage the cables, get ink everywhere, close the valve if it's one of the older VSs. Um, so 
we're sort of at the same at that point where we, we we spend a lot of time diagnosing over the phone and we do give the customers that that sort of right to repair yeah. um but like you say it's telling them what not to do is the is the is the hardest thing to get across. it is it is and so i over the over the year i developed a um, precaution statement and so i send that over before we sell a print head for example or any or we're going to have anybody uh be removing dampers like on a vs anything that has a positive uh ink pressure um things that that can cause you know ink leaks or whatever and, and i can't even tell you uh, nobody reads it um <laughs> you know uh uh and uh the the biggest thing that biggest thing that the biggest damager of a self repair is usually it's either sometimes it's the leak of, uh, of the ink, but most often they don't have it unplugged and they pull the cable yeah. and they're, they're ahead of themselves in the, in their head cause they're nervous. And, uh, and I was, you know, just, I said, I'm like, don't just turn it off. Unplug it from the wall, you know, unplug it from the wall. And is it a pain? Sure. To go back and forth, but they'll never have a problem because whenever I've been on a remote, and I remember one that was probably last year on a, on a, um, a, a DX7 change. Uh, I said, okay, we, you know, we went through the whole thing and I have a one rule, uh, Carl, you may not have your shop open and you may not have kids in the room or whatever. I need your full attention. And because that's when things happen, you know, and this guy had an employee there and he in interrupted them. And that was right after I said, unplug the machine. And he, he didn't plug it, and he pulled the, the cables out of the DX7, uh, and he says, "Hey, there was a spark." I said, "How can there be a spark if it's unplugged?" And he just went. Ah. It's, it's and, very easy yeah. to it's very easy to forget. Yeah. And, um, and, blew, and blew a mainboard, and you know it was an eighteen hundred dollar mistake. Yeah. Um, and you know, so so that's a that's a rough day, you know, um, because now they could have hired somebody to go and it would have been still been cheaper yeah. you know um so it's it's definitely it, i i i do sell it i try not to um uh do uh, a walkthrough with print heads with with folks because there is a high risk uh and it's also why i don't have a, a website that just let people buy the, those parts i need to talk to you and we need to have a discussion about how um how that would go you know um, you've done it before and that's great. And, and, and as a, you know, we, we just like when you were working for Roland, you know, you didn't want to have a user sell a, a printhead uh, or a dealer sell a printhead to an unqualified user. I do the same thing. They get no warranty. My printheads come from Roland. You get zero warranty yeah. unless I install it, you know, uh, but how, how else would you do it? You know, um, but, uh -huh. I, but with, but with that said, I think most people, like you said, with the the cap tops and the in the uh, the basic stuff, change a, a an encoder scale, all these things, easy breezy, you know, solves the problem. I'm I'm sort of like I say, right to repair, but if they're not confident, it doesn't make life easy for them or for me. If they're not confident, I just say, look, get me out. I'll come and fix it. I'll come and change right. it. So most people would rather that than them mess around a bit, get covered in ink, like you say, blow main boards, blow heads. Um, but when you, it, it made me laugh a little bit when you said about clearing the room. I'm still like that now when I upgrade firmwares. So when I upgrade firmware, I'm like, everyone yeah. get out of the way. Get no one near the power. Wait until I say you can come here. Even now, even if when I update our machines in the show, I'm like, just yeah. everybody get away from any power. Get away from the printer. That's, that's then, right. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, now, if I, when I'm doing the work, I, I talk. And anybody who's here has had, maybe had me there, I just chit-chat the whole time. Because like you, I've, you know, uh, slept with a screwdriver under my pillow and, and I can just do everything. And I, and I just say, if I just stop talking, that means I'm seeing something unusual and, you know, just, just you know, then I'll get through it and we'll stop talking. And I talk about your kids, or your, 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 your business, uh, how you price, whatever it is you want to talk about, we'll talk about. Um, uh, or if you want to learn how to use, you know, do what I'm doing, I have no problem with that either, you know. Uh, I, I'm I'm very confident in my my abilities. Uh, I don't I'm not afraid to lose business. Um, please take the business. Um, I got too much of it. Um, but I think it's really under once. What I like to do is I'll say, hey, um, 
I want to fill the potholes for the user. So, because most of the people I meet for the first time at their shop or their home or whatever, and I'll say, I'm going to fill the potholes for you. And they'll say, what do you mean? I said, well, you know some stuff, but do you know everything? You know, so I said, I, so I apologize. I'm going to tell you some stuff you already know. And, you know, but I just want to make sure that we, you cover everything. And yeah. we'll go everything from there's ink that is formulated to adhere to PVC vinyl. You know, there's a needle and they go all the way through, all the way down to where the waste is. And, you know, and they said, okay, that is the ink system. It's very simple. You know, then understanding uh, how the, all the systems work, you know, um, how does linear encoder scale relate to how it cuts? You know, the sensor is on the print head, a uh, print carriage that is, you know, uh, but if the printer, when it goes to cut, if it leaves this, the sensor over on the caps, how does the machine know where it's going to cut, you know, and having them understand, you know, that is counting the spins of the, uh, the scan motor, you know, and, and those, and those are related, um, so once they start understanding these, these things and they'll understand, hey, you know, it's not always the you know, linear encoder scale. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's the motor. Um, sometimes it's attention. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, um, a, a block that's, that's, that's sticky, whatever it is. But just understanding, getting people to be enlightened and how these, the systems work together, um, it, it really is becomes a powerful sort of tool and they start troubleshooting themselves just run it by me just to say hey does this make sense and then ship out a part a wheel a sensor you know whatever it is i think the um like i said the older machines are a lot easier to sort of explain that the way they were because it is literally one tube into a into a damper into a cap top into a head into a pump where once you fully understand how the machine works, it makes things easier repair-wise. So with the Truebiz models, with the 0308 and the 0400 error codes, it's knowing yeah. where the error is coming from. So anything 0, 0400 is the head below, 0308 is the head, anything above the head. And it's a damper fill in them, I always say, can can always tell a customer a lot. So if they're, if they're confident, I tend to take the cover off, run a damper fill and watch the arms. Right. Send me a video. Tell me when the arms are, when it fails. Tell me where the arms are. And it's just knowing that, like you say, it's knowing the systems, knowing how they work. And when a customer knows that, they can then sort of think for themselves and think, maybe I can fix that. Maybe that's the issue. Um, so it, it it's it's just explaining it to um, to a user if they're confident enough to do it. Then, like you say, more than happy for them to to go ahead right. and try things. Um, it was interesting when you said about obviously because me and Alex and Tom, um, we, we we didn't know how it worked in the US with regards to servicing um, and what what your everyday activities were. So it was good a good bit of insight to know, you know, we're sort of on similar parallel paths, just on the other side of the the Atlantic, shall we say? Well, but, I would say that it's definitely. I haven't been in, in the dealer world for many years. I think the last time I worked for a dealer. As a tech, I had to sell machines as well. That was the only way I could make a living was be able to sell machines. And you got the, you know, and and I think most you come from that dealer world and from Roland, so you understand the the the, the margins and markups and that sort of thing. I think people who understand, I think is something that I could provide anybody who's watching here is them to understand that there is not a lot of markup in machines uh, at the dealer level. Um, by the time that the machine is sold to the end user with some ink or some whatever it is that, that's included, the dealers may be making a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. I mean, my you know my my commission was on profit, and uh, you know I was making like hundred and fifty dollars you know commission on a, on a, a twenty thousand dollar sale. Um, it just so there's not a lot there, but what used to happen is that there was much more what you guys do as part of sales in, in, uh, in dealer sales of, of roll machines, it would usually come with at least one day. And I work, my dealer had two days of training. So we had one day install, um, go through the, go through the book. It's fire hose training. These people don't, don't even know what they're, they're seeing, you know, they're not going to remember anything. So I'd go through the book and then second day we'd go in and actually run jobs. I'd say, Hey, you know, get some jobs. We have a, you know, a decal job, have a banner job, have a, whatever it is. 
and we actually run jobs uh, for the day. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. So what is happening here right now is that it is essentially the, the and and I brought the machine to you. You know that it was in a truck that I drove. Um, you know, we, I would unbox it, it you know, it was pretty common. It was, it was unboxed at the dealer, made sure everything was right. And it usually was, uh, we put it on a, um, especially made like a gurney kind of thing, uh, put it into the, the truck and then we pull it out and, uh, you know, with a couple of hands and put it on a stand and we're up and running in an hour or two. So now it's drop shipped to the customer, um, they're very often asking the customer to put it up on a stand themselves, uh, assemble a stand. So these things are you know, rickety. Uh, they're not, you know, properly tensioning bolts and not putting the, the, um, the, the, the print part up onto the stand square. I mean, lots of problems, you know, dropped, not told you about it, you know, <laughs> these, these sorts of things. So, so it's kind of changed, I think in the last let's say seven or eight years, um, because there's not a lot of, enough money in enough, enough profit into the, in the sale to have a guy go there for two days. You know, I think you have to, they call it installation and training, but the kid who installs is getting the hell out of there as fast as possible. That, yeah. That, I think that's why, <laughs> especially here, yeah. they, they offer that secondary course. Cause like you said, the guy who's lumped up two sets of stairs, put it on a stand, yeah. finally got it set up after three hours. They just want to, they just want to go home, oh, yeah. um, which is why they offer that secondary course. Um, in the UK, um, do they do something similar in the US? Or is it just dealers that go out and? Yeah, do... just dealers. It's just it's it's all it's, it's just a dealer, a dealer network. Uh, they don't really have any independents that are that are doing it. I'm I'm, I'm about the, probably the only there's like two. There's one nationwide, but the heat handles all all um makes and models, and I'm the only uh, Roland uh, exclusive uh, guy out there right now. Right, okay, but it's a good idea. I mean, that's 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 a, that would be probably people would bite on it, um, but it's like everything. It's 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 a, there's a cost to it. So, you know, it seems like it's an expensive thing when you're buying it, uh, but maybe the thousand dollars for you know a day or two of training or whatever, would be worth it. Yeah, you know, I, I me and Phil were talking about it a few weeks ago, but I always find if you get a new, even if you're not new to it, download. You know, there's a free download of the manual. Have a look at it. If there's something you don't understand, have a look. If there's something in the menu you don't quite know what it is, have a quick look in the manual. Um, which will bring us to obviously the, the maintenance side as well, cleaning the heads, changing the wipers, um, anything you're not sure of, you know, everything's in that manual. If you if you know your machine, you know, you can keep it going for a long, long time. Yeah, you know, and, and one of the things that was always confusing to me, um, and and, and and I kind of pointed out to folks that I'm from at their shop. I'll say, hey, you know, look in the back of the manual. There's actually a list of, of the maintenance items here. You know, there's the six month, there's the one year. And nobody ever even knows about it. You know, uh, what, should you, what should you change after the six months? You know, what, what are the, the, the service lives of even motors and, and, and things of that nature? You know, it's all there. Yeah. Well, but you skip past it, uh, essentially. You know, it's right. It's right at the back of of, of the book. It's not. It's people think well. It's not the most interesting read, yeah. but if you, right. it's it's worth it's worth knowing it's there, so you can check it. Um, which which again with the with the maintenance parts. Um, do you often sort of advise on going by, or do you advise on how much usage the printers printers having, or do you do you do you stick to? Oh yeah, so. To, for sure. So, so one of the first things, if I go in, most of my work right now, is, as I mentioned, is is legacy. So uh, I don't do any warranty work. I'm not a warranty uh, organization for Roland uh, by by design. Um, that's for the people who made their profit on it, on the on the machine. So, so they're calling me after warranty is up. The um, so we'll go through first. If, if I get there, we we look at the history. You know, a number of hours that are on the machine, number of uh, shot count. Uh, I explain what the shot count is. Um, and um, if anyone uh, doesn't know what that is, that's just the number of uh, droplets that comes out of the, the, the nozzles of the head. And it's, and it's quite a large number that is allowed, like six billion per, yeah, six per billion. nozzle per head. You know, uh, uh, usually I've seen them at 20. You probably have seen it at 20 billion. 
uh, but I've also seen them die at one billion. So it will vary, you know, on the, there's a good average, but it's about six. Um, so we look at that. What's their, what, what kind of work do they do? You know, if they're only print, if they're printing all black all the time, you know, sometimes the black will last a long time because it's moving a lot of ink. They're not printing any black. They're wondering how come, how come my heads are dying at a, a one and a half billion or two billion? You're not moving enough black. Maybe you need to change cap tops more, you know, um, uh, it, it, maintenance items, you know. So we do talk about it. Uh, very, about half of my customers are, are the, the operator and uh, a maintainer. The other half are having um, operators, you know, uh, employees uh, do it. So I will typically ask for the main operator to be with me. You know, when we're, when we're cleaning the machine, I'll, uh, I am not like the dentist, as I tell them, I, I don't uh, make fun of anybody uh, for, uh, for not brushing uh, properly in the back, but I will show, you know, hey, let's get up in there. So what I found, the main problems I find out there for me uh, in, in the machines that I service, which uh, is, uh, I no longer, I no longer do uh, Pro 2, Pro 2 is off my list now. Uh, SP540V, I'm sorry, Shannon Frost, is off my list uh, as of um, uh, 2024. Yeah, I go 20, I go 20 years. You know, that's, that's long enough. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's very hard for these machines. They're, they're, um, they're old. And um, so I'll say at the SPs, I don't even have a lot of those anymore, but now a lot of VS, a lot of VSI, uh, XRs, um, uh, XCs, which they will never die. Um, I wish they would. And um, that's my, my, co my core. But so a lot of, still a lot of DX4 heads that are out there, but in the DX, you know, six sevens as well. I see a lot of problem with, with weekly maintenance. Um, it's not being done. It's, it's just not. Um, I have, a, you know, and, and I'll say that as a 90% sort of thing. It is not being done, uh, not even close. So what I'll do is I'll show them, hey, look, like on, on a, uh, a DX4-based machine, SPs, uh, not a lot of VPs anymore, they're all dead. Um, but uh, look in the back, get in that back row, right? Uh, behind the head, you know, it'll be back there. They're not getting it. And it's like hanging. So I'm, I explain that. I say, you understand that. I said a couple of things. Number one, you have a wiper. That's going to wipe that head. I'm like, yes, you, you agree? Yes or no, right? And I said, okay, well, so let's do two things. Let's look at your wiper. Now, if the wiper has all dog hair and, and crusties all over it, now that's scraping against your, your, your $800 printhead, number one. Number two, even if it's clean, it's grabbing that, that gunk that is on the leading part of the head. Now it's going to wipe it across your, your head. So you got to get in there and clean. I'm like, I'm not trying to, I, listen, I'll sell you print heads all day long. You know, that's, that's, it's fine with me, but, but if you keep it clean, you're going to have less stuff, you know, getting on the, on the print head. Um, and that's a, and that's a big deal. If you have animals in the shop, they, they, they don't, they don't clean it more often. Animals have to require more cleaning. Um, it's, now I understand that time flies and it's always Friday. Uh, but they just don't clean. They don't clean. They don't change. They don't change, clean the cap tops. They don't clean wipers. They just don't clean. And um, the machines that are cleaned will def definitely last longer and I'm there less often. Um, so, uh, so for me, I say clean better, clean more and clean better. Uh, people have asked me, can you come in to clean uh, for me? And I say, no, uh, because that's not what I do. Um, uh, it'll be the most expensive cleaning you've ever seen in your life, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, if you can just uh, clean it yourself, it only takes five minutes. Yeah. And, and, four, and, and four swabs, you know, and, and, and change of swabs, you know. Um, uh, on, so that's on the DX4 uh, machines. DX7 machines, so the VSs, VSIs, uh, what I'm finding out there is that nobody, 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 100% of my customers do not remove or ever change the wiper scraper. They, they don't remove the, the, the assembly to do a deep clean. They, they do it, it gets done when I see them. Yeah. And 
uh, it's two bolts, everyone. It's, you know, and I know it's not in the, in the manual for the user manual, I don't think anyway, but uh, and it should be right. Uh, but it's two bolts, left hand side, a three millimeter Allen. You, you know, you probably get a, I use a little ratchet, boom, 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 comes right out and you clean it. And it, and it will always develop this little, this booger uh, off of one of the, one of the, 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 uh, uh, the holders. Right. And, and I'm like, you understand that this is, if you have a three inch booger on that thing and it is flipping around, that might actually hit the head. You understand, you know, um, because it's going to flip it's going to hit something it might hit the wiper itself and then it sticks and then a wiper goes across you know yeah. it's 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 craziness um i, I find it obviously what trying to tell someone that over the phone I, I find it one of them borderline things to try and explain because it's two screws then you've got to unplug the uh wiper motor Set, right the motor and the sensor right absolutely um, a lot of people can do it but it's just one of them do i tell them to do it and they rip the sensor off um, well, that's, that's, that's the thing, right? So, so what I've been doing when I I'm out on service on it, I actually cut off the, uh, uh the sensor. So it's just going to hang there. And so they don't have to go fight and find that, that little one. So all I have to do is pull, literally just pull it off the sensor yeah, and then, yeah. and then, uh, the, the motor, um, but nobody ever changes it. They don't change the, the wiper scraper. Um, I'm, I'm also seeing out there right now, a lot of new spring damage, uh, that has nothing to do with everybody, anybody, at least I don't think, but springs on those assemblies are starting to break. Um, so I, I'm, I'm carrying those uh, now. I'll typically replace them uh, on that, that assembly. And um, uh, that, that's been a, a fairly new uh, problem that, I, that I've been seeing out there. Um, you know, cap tops, they don't clean the cap top. Uh, they're afraid of it. And should I touch it? Yeah. You know, it, 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 and you've probably heard that, right? You know, so, yeah. so, it, so it's the okay. whole thing. It, it, it's the exact opposite of, of, of uh, being, you, you can warn them not to be careful with the heads, but now they're too careful. You yeah. know? I'm like, yeah, you have to clean that cap top. It's, it's, it's waste. Don't worry. You just make sure it's clean. I get, I get so many people said, I roll and said, don't touch the surface of the print head. Don't touch the cap top. I think I think they've sort of been sort of told that they get nervous touching the head. Where I said, look, if you right, if, I, I, you, I, I, if right. You, a, a wiper scrapes the cross cross it yeah, three exactly. times a day. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, so your clean swab is going to be fine. Uh, yeah. But you you don't want to to scrub it. I tell them. But if I go in there, like, oh, you're touching it. I'm like, yeah. How am I going to get it clean? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but uh, but I do explain. I say I do go to I do honestly go to places where I use a razor blade to cut the ink off of the head. And that is crazy to me, you know, and uh, makes me nervous <laughs> but, about how you're going to do your job, <laughs> you, you know, uh, to, to get the, the uh, dried ink off the head, you know, um, but it's cleaning. Cleaning is, is, is a giant, is a giant thing uh, for me. Um, I think if, if that can be fixed, that is, that is good. Watching the dates on the ink, uh, another thing that everybody uh, should be watching, uh, and you probably see it as well. Um, I am finding that the low volume users are not using the printer enough and you have way out of date ink. I don't mean three months out of date. I don't even mean a year out of date. I went just went to a place just recently, had 2016 ink in it. Okay, so... Um, that's cool. now, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I've in my, I screw up once a year, right? You probably do the same or whatever, you know? And so I screw up on a print head once a year. My last screw up was not paying attention to the date on the ink that was in the machine. I took, I took the customer's word for it that he had just put in the cartridge instead of checking it myself. And so when I pulled in the ink, uh, it, it would just it saw, it went solid immediately, and um, and it was uh, I think it was a 2017 black, and uh, this was um, a few months ago. So, uh, yeah, and and whether or not it's his fault that it was 2017, you really should look at the date. He says he just got it from the manufacturer or from the distributor. The distributor didn't rotate it, you know doesn't really matter it was old ink uh so I'm, I'm seeing a lot of old ink out there 
um, that's something for, for folks to, to be attentive to for, for sure. Um, uh, bad uh, environmental conditions. Uh, another, another problem that, that I'm seeing out there, I'm seeing uh, high humidities in some of these shops. Uh, I'm seeing rust starting to, to happen um, in places that they really shouldn't happen may not be a thing in, in the in the uh, UK, but uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't get humidity or or, or yeah. sun basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. So, so we get a lot of uh, there's a lot. It depends on on where you're at. You know, I, I was in a shop uh, again about a week ago um, here in Southwest Florida, and it was 110 degrees in the shop. Okay, uh, it was a, um, a a barn, and uh, I couldn't even see because I had sweat dripping out of my eyes uh it was a uh, an lej 640 and um uh just not taking care of the machine from a of how it was operating i couldn't even tell you you know but they didn't seem to care but the machine was was just just destroyed from it from the, the the ink was all got all solid in the yellow uh it was just they just wouldn't want to talk to me about the the the, the concern that i had that environmental you know you could show them the chart all all day long they're like oh it's it's fine but it's not fine you know uh you have to take care of the machine uh, put it into a good uh, a good space i tell uh, all my customers go to uh, walmart you know uh, stores over here they have a little uh, digital scale uh, uh temperature and uh, humidity uh meter you put it right on the top of the machine plus 15 dollars, and it keeps track of the 24 hour change so you know where it's at right now and what happened last night um, because these, uh, these, these small shops very typically don't, don't do, uh, environmental controls in the evenings. So especially in the winter time that can get down to, to 40 degrees, sometimes even, even lower. Um, uh, or, or what is it right now? Maybe it's 60, uh, 70, 80% humidity, um, uh, or, or the exact opposite. Maybe it's 20% humidity. You know, you got problems either way. Um, so the, uh, folks are not taking care of those sorts of con concerns. There's certainly lots of people who do, but it's very often these, these folks that have problems, they have very poor uh, environment for the, for the machines, uh, for, for sure. Yeah. That's, I think, I think ours is the, the opposite. Ours is, is the cold. So especially with the LED, right. like say LEJs, UV, uh, BN20s, um, they suffer more, so they like you say they get like a little portable um, thermometer on top of the yeah. printer. And they just put like a little heater underneath it just to keep it going, um, which is what we recommend as well with the with the LEJs. Um, but going back to the going back to the ink, um, like you say, we we had someone who had a, a third party ink, and it was expired by twenty twenty one, I think it was, um, and like I say, blocked up a blocked up a printhead. And this was on a Truvis, um, so it just suddenly just automatically blocked out. So, like you say, keep your eye on the expiry dates. Uh, thankfully, on the on the TR two, if you're using the proper ink, it will it will give a, a head protection error. Right. I don't know if you've seen that before. Yes. Um, so if it if it's goes past the two for a year, it will print as slow as it possibly can. Right. So it's, so is it is it one year that that allows it to be passed? Uh, I think the, it's I think three it's, years. I think it's two years. Um, on, I think it's two years um, opened in the machine and then three years shelf life. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Okay. I don't, good, like I say, I don't think that obviously the yep. machine won't know until you physically right. put that in. Uh, right. That the makes machine. sense. But as soon as it starts doing that, you know, you, your ink's, your ink's had it, get it out, put right. a new one in. Maybe depending on how long it's been in there for, do a damper fill, refresh that damper. Um, but yeah, thankfully the Truvis models, they do give you that, that sort of, Semi warning, should we say? Um, right. So you know, you know to take it out. Um, I've noticed. I don't know with you as well with the um, the older generation. I've noticed some of the ink chips are conflicting with firmwares now. So when you put I them have, on, yeah. on the VPs and the S, the older yes. SPs, you had to you had to have the the updated uh, firmware for it to recognize uh, people were having a lot of problems, and that that tells you right there too. You have some old ink or. Or maybe you're buying it and they have just the chip is old or whatever it is, you know. Um, but ink is ink is a problem, and uh, you know, and, and I'm agnostic for ink. Obviously, I sell a lot of ink. I can't sell a roll of ink because they don't allow me to, uh, as you would imagine, uh, that would cause some problems. Uh, but uh, I sell a lot of Jet Best. I sell Sun Chemical as well. 
Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. And um, uh, as, as long as the inks are, are good, you're agitated, you know, uh, you're not you're not buying the weird inks uh, on eBay. You know, if you buy a good named ink, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, especially if you have a really old machine or you, you got to do a lot of powerful cleanings. Uh, who do, who wants to spend a hundred and you know I'm not even sure what it costs now. One hundred and fifty dollars US for a four forty. That's crazy money. Um, but you still have to be attentive to it. And you know, there's always a risk to using any ink. I don't care if it's OEM. Uh, Jet best, uh, whoever it is, um, it's ink is ink is a funny thing. And I just wanted, nozzles you know, are very very sensitive. Well, this is just yeah. literally what I'm just about to come yeah. on to. Um, I've noticed on the group you put some about a nozzle check a few weeks ago, uh, which I thought was a, a good topic to try and cover yeah. for for the everyday user. Yeah, to sort of know what you're looking at when you're doing the nozzle check. Oh yeah, that was actually an old post somebody had commented on believe it or not uh oh, okay. it, was, it was like yeah, it was actually a couple of years old and it was it was just a it was a thing that i always tell people i say we don't sell nozzle checks at least i didn't in my shop right <laughs> right yeah. uh so uh it, it's what does the print look like i mean if you had to change your print head every time you had a, a, something off with it you'd go you'd go broke it's it's just not a thing so it's, so you can use that as a gauge but trying to understand what is or if you have your budget, and that's this particular case, they had a budget for one head, and they showed that the nozzle check said replace the black, but a fill check, a fill test said uh, replace the cyan, and and that was one of the things. It was just make sure you understand, especially if you're self-servicing, or even if you have a tech, ask the question uh, is really what it was. How do you know if you have a tech and you're not sure if you trust them or not? Um, I get that a lot. You know, people don't not sure if they trust the young guys coming in, young guys and young gals. Um, how do you know that head that you're going to change is the one that's going to give me the best bang for the buck? Not necessarily solve my problem, but what you get, it's going to give me the best bang for the buck. And uh, and I am a giant fan, and probably you are a fill test uh, that that can uh, uh, illuminate many many problems you know in what is what is correct you know to, to to change and if anybody doesn't know what that is that's in your service mode uh i think all the machines have it um uh, it, it will be depending on the machine it's usually in the, the print uh menu then you go into a test patterns menu then you it'll say fill test and that yeah. was going to print that's the only way you can get pure ink out of every uh, uh every print head so that's the only way you'll be able to see pure light cyan ink and pure light magenta ink and light light black um and that with the, what you know what the with the mode is it prints it's, it's what i like is that like an eight pass mode or something like that i think it's just a just a very sort of standard yeah like just dump, yeah, yeah just dumps ink. Maybe, yeah. yeah it dumps ink pretty fast and and the whole idea was to, to for it to prove that the damper was refilling so if each color were faded out to light the damper was not refilling and, um, and that was the whole fill thing. And, um, uh, but it also can help you illuminate the, the problems on a specific uh, head. And, um, and that, gosh, I, I love that test. Uh, I, I have people do that all the time, just to show it to me and show me the edge, like a left edge or the right edge, just to see, you can even see like mis, mis uh, alignments in, in, uh, a, um, uh, in, the, in the head alignment, you know, very minor, but if you can see that, you know, uh, even even problems with encoder scales and stuff like that, you know, it's a, it's a great test to to try. So I, I I encourage folks to use that. Well, I seen that post and literally not not too long ago, I had a good example about that. So a VP, um, obviously your black is misfiring, um, and I got there and the guy is showing me the the print. Um, he's like, I think my black head gone. So looking at the nozzle test, the black head, all the other three colors are fine. Not until I go into not until I get my magnifying glass on. I say, I'm going. Let me go into service mode, run the nozzle check, and obviously it does the dot pattern. Black is obviously it's misfiring, but this it's the cyan that was the issue. So again, this guy's potentially only had a budget for one print head, and he's Sorry. doing this massive sort of purple print. Um, I said it's not the black. The black will need changing eventually, but the the, the instant issue was the cyan. So when you looked at the dot pattern, all the dots were erratic all over the place. But in the nozzle right. check, it was it was fine. It's fine, right. So I think people see that and they think, well, it must be my black. And it's not until you understand the nozzle check and what you're looking at. Like you say, do a, do a, do a fill test. That will give you 
the sign will probably be all over the place, be missed in. Uh, like right. I said, the black the black was banned in slightly, but it's yeah, it I've seen I've seen a, some instant. really terrible blacks and produce a fine print. Yeah, you know, and now if you were doing like to say if you were doing a, a field of gray, that black has got to be perfect. But in general, a black is usually a little bit rough, and um, and it, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah VP is yeah. actual VP was running. He was uh, running, he's still going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. That's awesome. I don't know how long uh, it's going to last, but we'll, it's still going for the time being. Right. I own three of them. It broke my heart when they had problems. So, so yeah. I, I totally get it. Yeah. There was, um, I think there was a few years back, there was a, a conversion that came out. So you could um, turn a VP into a VPI, but it needed obviously a new main board, new power supply, new survey board. And if he wasn't under warranty, it probably wasn't worth doing. But right. the, the people that Roland covered at the time were still under warranty. Oh, okay. Uh, so they they obviously turned it into a VPI for them. So they're they're still running, uh, thankfully, which is which is good news. Yeah, that's that's good news. I didn't hear about that uh, over here in the US, but that would have been very popular, obviously. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, I think it was tried to keep quiet a little bit, but um, right. was, there weren't many customers left under warranty because, like I say, it's a, it's an older generation machine. Right. So I thought if they if they could fix that, then they could say, look, we're not covering it anymore. We've we've done this. Off you go. So um, it was just a nice gesture from Roland, I think, just to cover that at the, at that point and get get them working again. Uh, whether or not if it's a thing now, whether or not they've just sort of scrapped it and right because I think I, they don't they don't cover the uh, older generation machines anymore. So now, do you have um, when you go into VS uh, from from VP, uh, your um, the, the the folks that you you take care of, uh, how many are VS, how many are VSI? You know, is it like a 50-50? Do you find have a um, lot more VS out there? It's mostly the VSs. Um, the yeah. VSIs are still covered by Roland UK right. uh, Care, so most people still under warranty with them. It's the, it's the older VSs that tend to not be under warranty anymore. I do, are, you, are the VSs that you folks take care of all had the retrofit for the the uh, the extended the extended uh, cartridge bay? Yeah, so at the most yeah. of them are all vertical. Yeah, well, you know, what I mean, they had that 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 retrofit when they first came out in the field. They had that over there. So when the, when oh. the VSs first came out, they had it was flat, and then the cartridges went out went in there and it, it extended out this far. You see, yeah. And then they had a a field retrofit where it added the extender, so it made it more likely to for the for the needle to puncture the same spot on the uh, on the cartridge. No, uh, we didn't, they, that. didn't say that. Yeah, so 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 what happened was uh, it, it was it, right in the beginnings of my um, being attack within a, a year or two. So when the, when they first came out the VP uh, VSs, and it's something for people to look at if they're going to buy a VS because I've I've actually started the reason why I asked. I've seen a couple of VSs out there that don't have the the retrofit um, where it's flat on one side, and what they were having problems with is cartridge leaks. And because they were having people, uh, uh, you know, shake the cartridge. So on a, on a cartridge that was a 440, they were coming inside uh, crooked. So the needle was puncturing a different spot each time. So eventually it made the, the hole bigger and then it would leak out onto the floor. So there was a retrofit, which uh, an emergency retrofit, because it was ruining people's floors. Uh, I mean... I can't even tell you. People want to kill me. Um, uh, to to add that that panel, right, uh, and the the extender, and then you had to open up the machine, clean it up, and put in padding into 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 where behind where the choke valves are and all that stuff, uh, uh, just in case. Just in case. That sort of makes sense because every time I yeah. opened where the choke valve yeah. was, there was right. there was always ink in there. There was like a white foam pad. Yeah. That was well, you had to add that, right? Yeah, it was a okay. it was a total total disaster so i i, I would it, uh tell anybody who's buying a vs make sure that it has that little step up um because it can be a problem uh because you can't find the retrofits anymore uh you might be able to get one off of um, a, a, a boneyard machine or something like that but um but it made it made a big difference i just tell people listen I like, just don't shake them <laughs> you know you know if you, if you got that just put it in use the machine don't worry uh, just don't shake the cartridges. Um, uh, but uh, but that's um, uh, a machine. So the VS is uh, caused me a lot of pain. I guess is what I would say, especially in the choke valve. 
um, in the older models, especially ones that had um, white metallic in them. And uh, do you have a lot of a lot of those machines that you take care of? Yeah, with the white and metallic. Yeah. 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 Um, well, are, they, are they still are they still running the white metallic, or did they put in cleaning cartridges? Or... Uh, metal metallics. I think there's not many I've seen yeah. out of metallic because of the price of the cartridge and the issues you can right. get with it. I think people just sort of chuck a cleaning cartridge in. Um, right. More or less same with the white. If you're not using the white, obviously it settles inside the the damper in the line. Right. And causes issues with the damper. So I think people now if they're not using it, they just shove a cleaning cartridge in. Right. I've I've done the last ones I've been been. Uh, out there, people buying them now, third hand, fourth hand, whatever it is. I mean, these things things get uh, get passed down quite a bit. Uh, I've been suggesting a, an ink line change uh, on those. I've just been pulling out the, the white and metallic lines and putting in four uh, four individual lines. So actually, I take out the, the circulation system to be truthful. I just just, just bypass uh, it. Okay. Yeah, just bypass it, and the machine don't know. And um, I just put two lines in there for the extra colors, and we'll make it. A six color or a four color uh, machine um, and that's been working working pretty good um, uh, but yeah my uh, my my feeling is a vs is an okay buy vsi is the one to buy and uh, uh w without a doubt uh, nice easy machine uh, we, we like to call them the uh, the unicorn uh here in the tech circles uh, i think i think that's half the reason why all the new models are based on the vsi chassis so like I said, the LEC two's got the same sort of ink tech. The um, MG, the new one, they've all got the same sort of inner workings as the VSI. I think that's probably the reason why is because they're they're solid, they're, they're well made. Right. Oh yeah, for for sure. Now, that's the one to buy if you can find them. Uh, they they go uh, pretty quick here. Um, even though the market right now, used market is soft in the US. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, that that's a that's a great machine. Uh. Uh, for sure but the market is so soft i just uh had one um i just i just bought one like two weeks or two weeks ago and i and it sold it for eighteen hundred dollars it need needs head but um but they didn't even want to pay me eighteen hundred for it you know it's just such a such a crappy market right now um, um we just got um a question from claire can you get that field test on a bn20 um i don't think you can i think you have to go into versaworks do yeah. the the test print and if you want to you can crop that down within versaworks just so you've got the four cmy colors i think that's probably the closest you'll get to 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 getting that fill test on a bn20 yeah is that available on, on i don't do a lot of bn20s is that available in the uh the service utility i don't think so is it no you need you yeah. need to be an accredited engineer to get this service yeah, yeah. um but I mean, I've changed several heads now without it. It's just yeah. to, to clear the head, the head history. Uh, there is some head alignments, but I tend to once you put it into the bias. Right? Yeah, I gotta say, just bias. It's, yeah, it's, really, I mean, it's all fine. That, a machine that's slow, you're never gonna see any difference between the uh, the biases off by a half of a. Yeah, line yeah. most of the time because it's a locator pins. You, right. It's very often it goes in the same place. Uh, one thing with the BN20, going back to the maintenance side. Um, I see a lot of, obviously, when you do the manual clean, there's always a lot of, some people get the dragging ink issue. Uh, yeah. And what can be missed is when you do the um, the clean on the BN20, there's part of the printhead uh, carriage that is covered by the platen. And I find that there's a lot of people that get fluff stuck to the platen and you can't physically get to it when you're doing the manual clean. So you can clean the head and clean the head. But this bit is always missed. And if people start getting dragging ink along the um, material, there's always a bit of hair or fluff that people right. miss because it is covered by the platen. So you can get some tweezers in or you can get a swab in and just sort of brush it out. Um, so that's something to look out for on the BN20 that that, that I find is, is really common. The amount of warranty call-outs we used to do for Roland and that used to be the, the issue uh, because customers didn't know to look for that sort of thing. So um, I find that on the BN20. <clears throat> um, another question from from Claire. Uh, when you put a cleaning cartridge in, can you easily swap it out when you need white? Um, yeah, you can do. You might just have to do depending on how long that cleaning cartridge is. Probable cleaning or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two probable yeah. cleanings. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it should come back. the The good thing about the cleaning cartridge is it keeps the line clear. Um, so if you have used white before, if there's a bit of sediment in the line, that cleaning cartridge will will clear the line. Yeah. So if anything, it, it, it does it does help in that way. So I'm not a, I'm not a fan of 
of white ink on any sort of, of echo solvent machine. I, I just, I think that's the world of UV yeah. myself. That's a, that's a personal, you know, uh, observation for, for sure. But um, uh, it, it's cause I seen it. I don't have one successful customer w using white, not a single customer successful. No, uh, no, not, not long term anyway. I mean, there's, we have a few customers that constantly print white, which is good. Yeah. They're having, they're probably having two dampers a year. Which is probably more than more than that should be should be being changed. So we do get customers that use it a lot, but like you say, it does it does involve a, a couple of damper changes a year. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely agree. Well, with what, you. what were you what were you saying for those? It was just blocking, or is it uh, was the damper failing? Or it's I think it's a lose lose of the white. You're told to carry on printing. But obviously, this guy prints white all day every day, and he still has to change the damper. Whether or not it's just wear and tear more because of the pigment in the white, not too sure. But I think, at the, like you say, you're told to print a lot. He prints a lot and he still has to change dampers twice a year. So, right. like you say, I think it's just uh, not really a fan of it on solvent machines. Yeah, that's the nature of that beast in, in these these machines. If you want to print white, you might have to have some additional maintenance costs. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't looked yeah. too much into the BN2 yet, but I always said with the BN20, they should have, in the utility, should have done a circulate ink option yeah right uh whether or not that's in the bn2 i'll have to have a look at that but i think that's that's half the problem the user can't physically circulate the ink um it can only be done if you're constantly printing white which is um or you've got access to the service app um, right but isn't it isn't it always it's it's always worried me uh with the white ink uh they, we have a recirculation system but it recirculates to the y above the the head yeah so you're still not just recirculating inside the head you know, you're you're hoping that the purge every couple of hours is going to uh, to move enough and, and keep that clear. Um, mm -hmm. I was I was I was I thought it was funny that the the new uh, HP the the LX whatever it is the LX seven hundred eight hundred whatever it is was actually you actually take the, the the print head out of the machine and you put it into there's a there's a little place for it to go and it actually rotates the head 24 hours a day to keep the white ink moving, right? <laughs> you know, so like white ink is kind of crappy, you know, at least in, in a, a solvent as well. I mean, even in that stuff there, latex water-based ink, it was, it's still a problem. All of that, um, uh, that heavy pigment, you know, it was a titanium, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. I don't. I haven't seen that. I have to look into that. It sounds. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, sounds right. like a crazy exercise to do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, another question from Claire: If you print a bar of white every day, will that keep the ink circulated? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it should do. Um, yeah. I think it's set to circulate every twenty four hours. Um, if you print white, it might do it sooner. So yeah, that's that's that should be more than enough. Um, have you got any other? Hints and tips you'd want to share, anything like that, early when you're here? Or... So I, I think the only thing that I could uh, ad advise folks, I mean, we, we, I see like, you know, this this half half of the folks, everybody is is tight on money right now, you know, and, and it's always been, as I say right now, it's been the entire time that I've ever seen. I've got customers that can't change a blade, that don't want to change a, a cutting blade, and I have other customers that change a dx7 print head just because it's been a year and a half and it's fine so there's this these these giant dichotomy of, of people but i think in the middle is um just like going to the dentist uh, i i would say just uh, go ahead and, and have somebody in if you you know put it as part of your budget have somebody go in there if you have access to somebody that is within a couple of hours of you and it's not going to break the budget have somebody go in and who sees these machines every day and and they will help you through it because honestly uh, i clean up a lot of tears and you probably do too i, I probably clean up more, a few more than yours yours but and i'm like man how long has this been going on for They're like oh it's, it's it's kind of been leaking out of the machine for about three months well ink leaking out of your machine in the corner is a problem um or i've been hearing the ting 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 uh, as it prints for a month or whatever it is just um or even me feeling that i'm like hey this um this rail doesn't seem uh loose enough compared to what it should feel like you know what i mean you know the, the, the bearings are are getting uh, 
um, gunked up or whatever it is. You know, I feel those sorts of things and I can understand, hey, something's going on here. Or I can hear the motor, you know, doesn't sound right. You know, they're, they're oblivious to it because they hear that chainsaw sound all the time. They think it's normal and it's not normal. And uh, pay somebody to go. It, it's just so much. I mean, it's, it's not an ad for me. I, don't call me, actually. Uh, the, uh, uh, but if you can get somebody to, to help you with, uh, with these things and be an expert eye and expert ear, uh, it will can usually save you money in the long term. Um, it's, it's just, um, it's a trusted expert. You got to find a trusted expert. I understand that there's a lot of bad techs out there, uh, that are not trained. It's different than when you and I went into training where you actually went to Roland, you know, did you do, did you go to Roland yourself? Uh, yeah. Training? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Worked for Roland, yeah. Yeah. Right. So and they, we did break fix and it was, you know, you'd leave the room and they'd come in and they would, they, uh, uh in my, my, uh, training, uh, in Rhode Island, they actually cut wires and in the in the machine and uh so you actually had to to troubleshoot and uh so they don't do that anymore and they just whatever it is you know ipad training or whatever or even if that and uh so it's hard to get a trusted person but if you can find a trusted person uh you know stick with them have them come out once a year uh it doesn't need to be more than that typically and they'll give you a plan and you'll know what's going to break in the next year and that's what i tell people before i leave and it's on my invoice this is what I expect to break in the next year. And the next time I come see you, we should replace a motor. We should replace, um, you know, a, a belt. We should replace whatever and uh, treat it like your car is what I would say, I guess. Uh, you, you would not not do your oil changes or you would not change your timing belt to every 100,000 miles so you don't get stuck on the side of the road. And uh, uh, that's what I would do is, is, is just pay somebody, find a trusted person, pay them to come see it. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, even if it's just a quick phone call, if you're unsure of what it can be, right. give your local tech. Um, if you're in the UK, give myself a call. Um, if you need any advice, obviously contact your local tech. If you need someone out, get them out. Yeah, and and, and for, for me, from my point of view, yeah, certainly I have a service business. I have a service business here on the East Coast, and really it's actually in Florida, but uh, Florida and Georgia. Um, you can message me. You know, we, I do a fair amount of remote work, um, but you're better off to have someone local to you who can actually get there. But if you can't find anybody local and, and, it, and it's hard to find somebody, just reach out. If, if I can't help you, I can guide you to somebody who can be a little bit more closer to you. Uh, I do know the people who are uh, trustworthy, as I, as I would call it. And uh, so we've, we've got guys who are trustworthy, you know, up up the East coast, you know, that would uh, be able to help you. And, uh, and, and really it's, it's not that expensive when it really comes down to it. I, I pay more my, uh, my VW mechanic per hour uh, than I make. So it's, um, it's, it's really, it's, uh, the, the parts are expensive, 100%, uh, you know, out of a $4,000 bill, sometimes, you know, the, the parts are $3,500. Um, and you know that, you know, a, a print head, four dampers, this, that, you know, it gets expensive, but, but, uh, it is what it is. You need the print to make money, you know, keep it, keep it running. If it's, if it's going to be in the corner, not printing, it's doing yeah. you no good. Exactly that. I think if you, um, at, at the time it seems, you know, you're being stripped of all your money, but I think when you sit down and think about it, that machine is going to make you money. So you need to keep running, keep up and running, get some expert advice and, and go from there. Um, the same goes for me if you're in the UK, um, reach out on Nationwide. My Nationwide's a little bit smaller than Ernie's Nationwide. <laughs> uh, I'm about the same. Yeah, I, be, I basically have, uh, I think with the UK is about the same same size as the, as the East Coast, uh, yeah. something like that. So it's about the same, it's about similar. Um, so um, my, most, but, places, yeah. most places for me are within a three hour drive. So it's right, uh, sure. it works out quite well. So. Right. That, that's awesome. Well, it was uh, nice talking to you. Uh, and and uh, uh, this, this was great. We should do it again. Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks again. Thanks for your time. Thanks for all your help you give to us. I see my, my buddy Matt up there. There yeah, he is. I, can see him there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see him with, with the baby uh, uh, dribble all over his. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't look too, awesome. you don't look too tired, Matt, which is good. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs>
Well, thanks again, Ernie. Thanks for your time. Um, you're, you're very, you're very welcome. One more quick question before we go sure. from Shannon. You might want to answer this one if it's Shannon. Uh, she's going to say, when are you coming to Minnesota? Uh, maybe after this question, she might. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I upgraded my machine to a newer used one, is there techs out there to help, or would I be in the same boat doing self maintenance? Well, uh, I would say uh, Shannon is that. Uh, Shannon has a, an SP540V. Uh, she's a longtime supporter of, of mine uh, and a, a, a ex-Navy vet like I am as well. Um, so uh, I would say, Shannon, I would probably guide you to to buy a, a VSI, uh, whether it be a 30-inch or a 54-inch. Uh, that is going to be a machine that is going to take you probably another, I don't know, I hate to give, give a number, but maybe like seven years or something like that, you know. Um, I think it's it's a good machine. I think um, for you it'd be easy. Uh, you know Versa works. Um, the the process of of running that that machine versus a an SP is really about the same, you know. Um, so I, I don't think you really need a tech. You just need to sell that SP five forty V and find one uh, a VS five forty I to buy. Uh, that's that's really the trick. Um, the, the process of, of making a, a switch is is really inconsequential, to be truthful. Right, stuff. Well, Ernie, listen, mate, thanks for your time. Um, I won't keep you any longer. I know you're a busy man. Um, oh, it's all good. I, I I carved it out for you, my man. And, yeah, thank you, uh, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I know yeah. you got I know you got a big fan base on the uh, on the group. So it's, no, 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 thank you, thank you. I'm sure uh, you I, get I, a lot of people ask you questions and uh, yeah, yeah. I get about uh, my my DMs go uh, for Facebook Messenger probably about twenty a day, and, uh, <laughs> and and which can you know if it's a simple thing it's easy. I usually will ask people um, to bring it to the group. That's what I'll say. I'll say if it's more than than a simple thing, I'll say, can you bring it to the group? Um, not because I don't want to do it. I, I, it's just because it's, that's why we have that. We have our, our everybody joining in. Uh, if, if someone needs personal help um, and uh, some one-on-one -on -one stuff or they, they can't bring it to the group, I'm happy to help. You know, uh, you know certainly uh, there's a cost to that. Uh, most people are, have no issue with that. And um, uh, because it's just time. I mean, I, I helped a, a gentleman a couple of weeks ago. It ended up being 12 hours. You, you know, and uh, it just is um, it eats up your time. Uh, not that I don't want to help, but uh, like I said, we gotta we gotta make a living here too. I think that group is uh, yeah. is fantastic. There's so, there's so many good people on there. I mean, like uh, so it's I'm unbelievable, so. and I'm blessed by it. And um, you know, and and really, you know, just before I, I I we close out here, just so everybody understands, it's not my group. It's you know, I'm the admin by weird default. You know, we started the group back in 2017, 18, no, 19, maybe, or whatever it was. And I was retiring from this stuff. And uh, I was in the middle, the beginning starts of getting a master's degree in, in web development. And I got sucked into it. You know, I started answering questions on this 1,000 person group. And I just started, Facebook said, hey, maybe you should join this group. And I did, and I started answering some questions, and um, and it's really Mike Gay, who, you, you know Mike, you know he th that the group was started by somebody who doesn't even belong to us anymore, and, and Mike paid the guy seven hundred and fifty dollars to uh, hand over the admin keys and then allow him to kick them off, and Mike had said to me, hey, can you can you just be an admin for me? And I said okay. And, and really, it, so it's really, it's not mine. I just maybe set a tone is, is really what, what it's come down to. And the group is really you, you know, all, all these, these, uh, these texts all around, you know, who, you know, do it to learn like I do. I, I learn there. I'm, you know, yeah, am I making some, some, uh, some connections and making um, a business there? Sure. Absolutely. Who wouldn't? That's that's why we have that. But I learn all the time. Oh my gosh, you know, I um, it, it's it's crazy. But now what? Thirteen thousand people, you know, it's it's a it's a decent audience, and and I think we we have less political stuff, less BS, you know, less fighting and that that sort of thing, and uh, and we don't even really have to um, police it. You know what I mean? An occasional thing, but uh, I I appreciate everybody who joins.
I think everyone knows what they're there yeah. for, don't they? Everyone, know, everyone's on the same page. Everyone's there yeah. just for help and advice. So I think that's definitely yeah. gets trust to people. Yeah, and and um, and really, the the answer is the, the the motto or the 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 tone is we help everyone. I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. We help everyone. Uh, maybe I'll send you a message on the side saying, "Hey, don't do this," but really, we help everyone. 